hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. Oh, what you say? Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. Oh, woman, oh, woman, don't you treat me so mean. You're the meanest old woman that I've ever seen. I guess if you say so. Things and go. That's right, hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. Oh, what you say? Come on back. Then it's working. <laughs> Plus, it fits right in with the holiday season. You ready to go? How did you get invited to a hot college party? Well, they only invited three high school kids. Johnny's bringing the drinks, Ed's bringing the pizza, and I'm bringing you. <laughs> and how are we getting there? Oh, it's simple. When Dad gets home, you ask him to borrow the car. He can't say no to you. <laughs> I know. He can't. <laughs> Daddy, I was just wondering, can I borrow the car? No. Thank you. <laughs> hey, what do you mean, no? I mean, you did something really bad, so you can't use the car. Daddy, no matter what anyone says, I did not fill the car with the cheapest gas imaginable or put on the bumper sticker that says if you're a cop and you can read this, it's impossible. <laughs> I don't care about that stuff. You changed my radio stations. Now I can't find them anymore. I like classic rock, you know that. The Stones, the Who, the Chipmunks. All I got is that K-Rap in the all Alanis Morissette station. Gee, I wonder why that guy left her. Uh, Daddy. Oh, sorry, honey. What I meant to say was, no, you can't use the car. All right, don't worry. I'll ask Mom. She can't say no to me. Mom? No. <laughs> Look, Jack, I was gonna give it to you for Christmas, but I can't wait. Here, it's the Alanis Morissette Christmas album. <laughs> My favorite is her version of Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, he left me at Christmas. <laughs> he tore my heart out, it's not fair. No man deserves to live. Wait till my next boyfriend, I'll crush him. <laughs> I don't want to let's open sleigh, hey? Yeah, well, uh, thanks a lot. I got you Roseanne's Hanukkah album. Be a joke, mister. Stop grinching around. What's wrong with you? Ah, uh, the kids change my radio stations, Floppy. Boy, I tell you, sometimes I just hate having kids. But I love having beer. <laughs> yep, my old friend, Beer. Beer doesn't change your radio stations. Beer doesn't want to borrow your car. Beer doesn't cause your wife to lose her figure. <laughs> Wait a second, yes, it does. And it sponsors those cool Rolling Stones concerts. I guess even beer can make a mistake. I can name three other mistakes beer made. They're called Ryan, Tiffany, and Roth. That's where you're wrong, mister. Ross was vodka. Don't call my kids mistakes. Except for Ryan, of course. Why am I even talking to you? You don't know anything about kids. No, I don't. I've just been mauled by thousands of them. I'm a toy, remember? Kids were touching me all over. They'd haul me out of the bin. They'd sneeze on me, Jack, and wipe their snotty noses all over me. Then they'd throw me back in, the spittle hanging from my ears, gum in my fur, soaked to my seams in breast milk and bile. But by the time you picked me out to give to your kid, I was so disease-ridden, I'm surprised any of you survived. There's no coincidence that Ryan got smallpox, by the way. I thought you were gonna velveteen rabbit me after that. Uh. By the way, that velveteen rabbit stayed with that kid through the whole disease, single-handedly pulled him through it, and they burned him at the stake for it. What a hero. He's the Joan of Arc of my people. 
So don't tell me I don't know kids. I slept with more kids than Michael Jackson. <laughs> All right, all right, maybe kids do suck, but they give you a reason to drink. I mean, you think about it, a single guy who drinks alone, that is pathetic. But a married guy with kids who drinks, the world understands. Because <laughs> no matter how pathetic your job is or how much your wife dominates you, to your kids, you're always just dad. And that's sort of like being king. What a great party. Let me ask you a question. Is it still technically getting to second base even if the girl's unconscious? It is in the eyes of the law. All right. Woohoo! Then it's official. <laughs> Excuse me, Pervo boy. In your jubilation, you might not have noticed there's no car here. <laughs> oh, no. I think someone might have taken our car. I'm cold. I'm cold. What are we gonna do? Give me your pants. Why? Do you have a plan? No. But it looks like we're taking the bus home and I'm not sitting on the seat. <laughs> oh, Jack, what happened? You were gone so long, I thought you were dead. And then I got over my grief. <laughs> I was gone for a half hour. Well, how long am I supposed to wait? Look, it took me a while to find the party, but I finally found it. Then I took the car. So when they come out, they'll think the car's been stolen. I got it parked right around the corner so they won't see it when they get home. <laughs> they might be so scared they may never come home. Oh, Jack, for once you've actually excited me. You know, we, we have time to play a frisky little game before they get here. Can I cuff you? No. Oh, I wonder which kid will tell us. Oh, I think it's gonna be Ryan who breaks. <laughs> I raised a hell of a stool pigeon. No, no, I think it'll be Tiffany. My sweet little baby Tiffany could never lie to her daddy. I'm her favorite parent, you know. She told me so herself. Actually, I think they'll both tell. Ryan because he's so afraid of you, and Tiffany because she loves me so much. Hate and love. We make such a great team. Just had to leave my pants on the bus. They were all sticky. They were all sticky before. Oh, I can't face them. I can't face them. Pull yourself together, weenie boy. All right, you tell them. They never wanted me. Tell them? Why tell them? What earthly good could it do? We're not going to tell them? Oh, I'm cold, I'm cold. Shut up. Um, okay, let's practice. We went to the party on a bus and we came home on a bus. We know nothing about any car, okay? Okay, then I'll be mom. Ryan, how was your evening? We took the car, mom, we took the car! Okay, then how about this? Can you look stupid? I don't think so. Okay, then just look like that. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, Tiff. Hi, Ryan. I'm cold. I'm cold. Maybe that's because you're not wearing pants. Good night. She loves me so much she couldn't bear to tell me. Never mind her. Our son takes his pants off to ride the bus. I've been on the bus. Believe me, he fits right in. Well, I guess we could do something to punish him, but I think these kids have to learn to tell the truth on their own. Believe me, I know them. They won't be able to sleep. Their conscience will be bothering them all night, and first thing in the morning, they'll come rushing down here to tell us the truth. Yeah, it's going to be a long night. So, can I cuff you? No. 
It's degrading and humiliating, and I don't like feeling helpless. How would you like it if I cuffed you? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna crack and burn those kids just like I did these eggs. Breakfast, honey. What are these? <laughs> You're not gonna make us eat your waffles again, are you? You all love my fluffy waffles. As for these, they're, well, they're handcuffs. But we use them for cookie cutters. Good. I was afraid you were using them for bondage. You know, like the cable shows I watch at Bobby's house. <laughs> oh, I'm scared, I'm scared. I am not going to let you crack. Just let me do all the talking. You don't even know the car was stolen yet, so remember to act surprised. Okay. Come on, kids. Breakfast is ready. Wow! The car was stolen. <laughs> I gotta get you out of here. We're not hungry, but we're starved for knowledge. Off to school we go. Wait! We'll drive you. Yeah, I'll go warm up the car. <laughs> Are you okay, Ryan? Is anything on your mind? He says no. Good. Good. Well, then I'll just wait for you kids in the car. I'll walk you to the car. Oh, I gotta tell. I gotta tell. Go ahead. Tell. But if you tell, I will sell you out in a second. I don't want to do it, Daddy. You made me. He'll buy me clothes and send you to military school. Oh, my God, the car's been stolen! I don't want to go to military school. If only the car thieves knew what it did to the people whose car was stolen. I? Yes, if the culprits would just confess, imagine how much better they would feel. Because the truth is always better than a lie. Daddy. <laughs> You're so smart and wise. Well, let's talk about practical things, shall we? Let's look at the bright side. You have insurance, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you could take the money and put a down payment on a new car. In fact, if you would do as I've been saying for years and incorporate yourself, you could lease back to the corporation. It would cost practically nothing. It's actually a blessing in disguise. You know she's right. <laughs> the truth is, the warranty's run out on that car. The brakes are bad, the, the suspension is going, the tires are bald. It's a rolling death trap. Mm. We were gonna give it to you kids in a few months anyway. <laughs> Maybe it's not a bad idea to get a new car. We've never had a new car. Like a Lincoln. Oh, Jack, I've wanted a Lincoln ever since I was a little girl. Something big and powerful and sexy like the man I never had. <laughs> Maybe in black. Honey! <laughs> the car wasn't really taken, remember? We're using this ruse to break the kids. Now, kids! They just may have too much of me in them to break, Jack. Yeah. Well, I could tell that Tiffany was about to confess. But Ryan, he's like an evil puppet master holding her back. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go retrieve the car and then go to work. It's always easier to punish the kids after a lousy, stinking day at work. <laughs> I'm a trifle confused. Last night, I set my alarm for 11.30. I turned on The Tonight Show. And Jack Parr wasn't on it. Instead, there was a huge caricature of a man with an enormous paper mache jaw. It must be this new Johnny Carson person. He's not going to make it. Who's Johnny Carson? Exactly! Oh, you are so smart, my little Ryan. I'm Ross. It hardly matters. I'm through with you anyway. Mom, I need to ask you a question. Ah. Ross, sweetheart, would you mind leaving us? Mind? 
<laughs> Mom, the kids took our car without our permission, so we tricked them into thinking that it's been stolen. Now we're trying to guilt them into telling us that they took it. You think it'll work? No. Children never feel any guilt. They take your youth, they take your life, they take the milk from your bosom. Well, in your case, it was milk from the maid's bosom. <laughs> what? Why are you looking at me like that? You're the only one in the family who can go to Mexico without getting sick. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny, our car really has been stolen. Can you believe it? What are we gonna do now? No, Jack, the kids are gone. You don't have to pretend anymore. I'm not pretending the car was really stolen. What are we gonna do? You mean our broken down, horrible old car that I'm ashamed to be seen in was stolen? Yes. Oh. We're getting a Lincoln, a Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln. Well, everything seems to be in order. On behalf of the Laughing Hyena Insurance Company, I just want to assure you that your check will be here in just a few moments. Any questions, Mrs. Malloy? Mrs. Malloy? It's the Lincoln Town Car. <laughs> Mrs. Malloy? She's Lincolning. Yes, luxury car itis. You use our money to buy a better car, we raise the rates in poor neighborhoods, everybody's happy. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Our cover's blown. We're being arrested. They know. I don't want to go to jail. I have a cute butt. <laughs> Ryan, get this through your head. You're attractive to nobody. No one wants you, no one ever will, so stop worrying. Besides, we won't get caught because they can't break me. And you, well, you just stay out here. <laughs> ah, she's right. It'll be okay. So I told a lie, a little lie. It's not like I'm going to hell. Hell is for bad boys. <laughs> Am I done? <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> now, let me tell you about the third episode of Different Strokes. <laughs> That's the one where I coined the phrase, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> They screamed! Oh, uh, we were just a bunch of ghetto kids living with a rich white guy. Long before that Fresh Prince fiasco. Fresh Prince. Fresh, my hiney. Ooh, I like that. That could be something. Fresh, my hiney. That's good! Now, in the 75th episode of Different Strokes. Oh, I saw that one. That was the one where, where Alex Karras didn't want you to have that little pet salamander. That was Webster, you idiot! <laughs> Ryan, you're not paying attention, are you? You know what? We're gonna have to start all over again with Different Strokes episode number one. <laughs> well, that about wraps it up. All you have to do is just sign this form and I'll give you the check. <laughs> Would you like to sign first, Mrs. Lincoln? Uh, no, you go first, Mr. Lincoln. <laughs> I did it, I did it. I took the car and it was stolen from the party. From a party? Ignore him, he only thinks he stole the car. I stole the car. You stole the car? You were right, Dad. It feels good to tell the truth. I mean, it hurts, but not as much as lying. <laughs> Look, the boy is obviously insane. He didn't steal the car. I did. Well, when I mean, I'm going to turn didn't... this over to the fraud division. Hmm. Yeah, but another victory for Laughing Hyena Insurance. Wait. Oh, Jack, my Lincoln! 
You had to tell the guy five jokes. You couldn't just sign up papers. Look, let's not turn on each other. Not when we have children. This is all your fault. <laughs> now, did you act alone in this? No, it was, it was all Tiffany's idea. Tiffany, Tiffany, Tiffany. Tiffany, get down here. Young lady, was it your idea to take the car to the party after I said you could not? <laughs> you made me do it, Daddy. <laughs> I knew it. That's all I needed to hear. That's all right, honey. Here you are. Take this money. Get yourself some nice. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Dad. I'm crying too. <laughs> you little sissy. And I'm gonna have to punish you. <laughs> Ryan, you're grounded for two weeks. No TV except for that uh, different strokes. It's a nice show. <laughs> You profited from a lie. You must be punished. <laughs> Tell it to someone with a conscience, you little weasel. Who is that boring news twit? Oh, um, dear Mr. Floppy, I noticed there are a lot of names running by on the side as you speak. Aren't those people who worked so hard for a split second of recognition totally upstaged by your lame attempt at humor? Jim, Chicago. Jim, yes, they are underappreciated, but they're a bunch of nobodies, and I'm a star. Work for your crumbs, babies. <laughs> <laughs>